On November 9, 1989, the Great Berlin Wall, separating Germany for over 20 years, was brought down for the first time. Germans, who are able to take a stand against communism, are finally able to break free and unite Germany. This momentous decision in history begins from the end of the Second World War. The war had left Germany in ruins, filled with bombed cities and starving people. The successful allies from Britain, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union divided Germany into four occupation zones. Berlin, Germany's capital, lay deep inside the Soviet zone. However, Winston Churchill, Harry Truman, and Joseph Stalin had agreed to split the city by the Treaty of Potsdam in 1945. A four-power administration of Berlin was established, with the eastern half going to the Russians and the western half being occupied by the Americans, the British, and the French. The treaty would turn out to be a blueprint for the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. By 1947, the Western Allies had united. In June 1948, the Soviet Union blocked all connections between the city and the western zone. At this, the western Allies responded with a massive airlift. Planes loaded with provisions landed in the city and continued until May 1949, when the Soviets lifted the blockade. Meanwhile, in the new Western Federal Republic of Germany, Minister for Economic Affairs Ludwig Earnhardt set up plans for economic recovery. Under him, West Germany's economy recovered and quickly prospered. The Eastern Zone was renamed the German Democratic Republic. Walter Ulbricht, the first secretary of the Communist Party, was the true highest authority in the new country. The economy was modeled after Vladimir Lenin's Russian Communism from 1917. The economy was controlled by the state with prices set by the government instead of the public. The contrast between East and West became more evident. In the West, East Berliners bought fruit where food shortages were rare and the market remained stable. On the other hand, East German workers held mass demonstrations to protest against food shortages and demand for increased production. In the violent East, riots were frequent and Soviet troops were often on the streets ending them. Victims of the riots were a constant reminder to the West that the East deserved freedom. From the beginning, many saw the West was a chance for a better life. Thousands of East Germans, especially the professional and skilled workers, fled to West Germany along with their families. By the summer of 1961, 5,000 people escaped each day. The communists refused to capitulate. Instead, they created a barbed wire boundary to stop those who threatened to destroy the East German economy. The 10-foot high border between East and West became a death strip for anyone trying to cross. Being the last hope for escape, thousands fled to West Berlin where they were welcomed. On August 1961, East German troops began building a 103-mile wall surrounding West Berlin. The wall was meant to stop immigration to the West. It became a new symbol of division, a physical iron curtain made of brick, mortar, stone, and steel. Suddenly, it has separated friends, families, and loved ones. The Berlin Wall, as we know it, was actually constructed in three different stages. The first in 1961, the second in 1964, and a third in 1976. But when it was first built, the wall could not stop those determined to reach freedom. In Berlin, many Easterners began jumping across the border from open windows. When authorities responded by breaking up the windows, people tunneled under the wall. This method also soon came to an end. The most desperate scrambled over the wall. Ladders were removed, and many did not succeed. Some even made their escape in the trunks of cars. To demonstrate his commitment to defend Berlin, President Kennedy of the United States sent in troops. When he went to Berlin in the summer of 1963, he explained to the world in his words that they could understand. All free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. I am a citizen of Berlin. To the West Berliners, those words were a promise. 
Since the end of the war, the Soviet Union had established communist governments in Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, and Poland. As economic problems grew in the communist bloc, so did movements for freedom. The 1980s was a decade for democracy. It began in Poland with solidarity. The first independent labor union, which challenged the entire communist system. Fearing Soviet intervention, the Polish military soon outlawed the union. In the Soviet Union, the economy was crumbling. Mikhail Gorbachev demanded change. Through his policy of perestroika, he called for a political and economic restructure. He freed dissidents and made it easier for people to immigrate. Next, he announced in Eastern Europe that Moscow would no longer interfere. The people responded. Poland's solidarity came back after all, leading the country over the communists. In Hungary, where its Soviet tanks had ended the revolution of the 1950s, the Communist Party was forced to call free elections. When Hungary began to roll up the Iron Curtain, tens of thousands of East Germans spread the word in no time. First they headed for those openings in the fence between Hungary and Austria. Then they headed for the West Germany Embassy in Czechoslovakia and Poland. The pressure of East German fleeing in such alarming numbers forced the East German government to make concession after concession. Behind the wall, East Germans demanded reform. Responding to public pressure, the official government of East Germany resigned on November 7, 1989. On November 9th, the communist leadership announced travel restrictions would be lifted. The East Germans were free to act. And that very night, they made a hole in the Berlin Wall. I haven't imagined this to stay in the morning to go over the line. We are doing the Berlin West. <laughs> Eventually, West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl proposed the East German Communist leaders with a plan that included reunification. After communist dominance had ended, the anti-communists were left to approve both the new constitution and the plan for reunification. The East German public had the final word through elections held in March 1990. On September 12th, representatives from the United States, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, France, and the two Germanys signed the treaty on the final settlement with respect to Germany. This would officially unite the country, with the East emerging into the Federal Republic. Today, owning a piece of the wall is owning a piece of history. It is also a constant reminder that the destruction of the 28-year-old Berlin Wall was actually a reaction to the oppression by the Communist Soviets for over 40 years. The contrast in freedom between East and West Germany and the influence by other nations demanding freedom. The Germans took a stand in history by demanding their freedom. <laughs>